This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Ezekiel Drews, host of Podcast, A Star Wars Story, here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Podcast, A Star Wars Story, where we talk about anything and everything Star Wars. A new show comes out bi-monthly. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Podcast, A Star Wars Story. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. or it's been raining it's been like a torrential downpour so we are I love this no go away um you know we're toughing it out we're toughing it out so we had to move no filter friday to no filter saturday what i thought was interesting about i have to fix my face while we're doing this so this is going to be like a multitasky kind of a situation and it's going to be kind of like the, there's no way this is happening. Um, it's going to be like the first time when I made the announcement that they were doing it. It's going to be a very similar video. So to start off as it happens, No Filter Friday has uh kind of gone international in a way because um hashtag me too has gone international the um there was an article that came out last week about i guess i'm gonna this week um about a korean a south korean uh well-known actor who's also a professor um was found dead and apparently it's being ruled as a suicide because uh, the suicide rate in certain places in Asia, like Japan and South Korea, is really, um, really high in comparison to other places um, and within the region. So apparently, as a professor, he recently resigned from his post because he had been accused of sexual misconduct. Now, this is international news, so we're not going to get uh, the full situation on, you know, this side of the Pacific. Um, but from what they said, it's not, his death isn't being investigated. Um, they're just ruling it as a suicide, and that's going to be, that's going to be that. But I thought it was interesting, even though... The suicide rate there um, is really high. I thought it was interesting how they just assumed that, um, oh, he killed himself. He's over it. He's off himself um, because of the allegations, which I thought was maybe a little callous. Like, maybe for there it's not callous. You know, everything is dependent on what little tiny patch of dirt, you know, you happen to come from. Um, am I getting it together? Does it look like I'm getting it together? I hope it does. Hang on, let me do a mirror check real fast. Seems like it could be okay. Do a little, little Terry Crews blendy blendy. Get it up in the hairline. That's like my biggest pet peeve is... Makeup looking like a mask. You gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it up in there. That's, it's part of the mystique. You know, I dyed my eyebrows today. Can you see this? If you're a podcast listener, you can't see this, but if 
you are a subscribee on um, hashtag no filter Friday through public house media the podcast version just know that I've dyed my eyebrows today and they're I mean we're living in the times of on fleek so maybe they're they're close to being on fleek perhaps I'm trying to get ready for Mexico I'm gonna be in Mexico next week and the week after um, working on things um, mm. so we'll you know see how that goes um, I've been talking to my friend while she's there so hopefully my Wi-Fi is good enough to either live stream or um, upload upload audio while I'm there. Because when I was in India, that was just not not gonna happen. I could barely open Instagram. But Mexico seems to be a little bit better, and they have T-Mobile, so. That would be good. And other news, more Hollywood-esque news, um, not about my life, but other people's lives. Linda Carter, the original Wonder Woman, um, came out and said that she also had a, you know, a Me Too story, like everyone else does. And back in the day, on the set of the original Wonder Woman, the television show, um, how it was like kind of a never-ending cycle of abuse, which doesn't surprise me because... For as bad as Hollywood is now, it is nothing in comparison to, to as grimy as it once was. Everybody was drunk back then, or so I've been told. Um, I've had a lot of old transpo guys tell me that, you know, the horrors of the good old days. Um, everybody was drunk. No one was happy. It was really, um, like, LA's a band of misfits. Like, don't get it twisted. But even back then, like... Most of the people that arrived in Hollywood back in the 60s and 70s were even more broken people than we have arriving now. It's just, you know, a lot of those people were people that literally couldn't, um, you know, they were just trying to survive. It wasn't the, it wasn't the holy grail of professions like it is now. Um, if you're really interested on the subject of Linda Cardellini, and or, not Linda Cardellini. Linda Cardellini is amazing. Linda Carter, also amazing, but older. Um, watch Moguls and there's a doc series. It's a four part series called Moguls. Moguls and Celebrities, I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's a kind of super in-depth um, documentary series, narrated documentary series on um, how Hollywood began, and like you know the budding technology of recorded sound and recorded uh, picture, and um, the advent of movie theaters and all that jazz, and how those people that you know. The Louis B. Mayers and the, you know, Samuel Goldwyns of the day and Cecil DeMille and Max Sennon, you know, all those people came together and made this, this crazy, crazy wild place that we live in. Um, but Linda Carter's story, um, she just kind of said that she had a Me Too story and that the set of Wonder Woman was, you know, not so wonderful, which... Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Hollywood television in the 70s. There's almost no ladies on TV. Um, unless they were moms. So, or, you know, what have you. Um, commercial. Commercial actresses. Um, anyway, that's besides the point. So, she didn't name the person that her Me Too story was about. Um, and she said that, you know, everybody's piled on this person and that she would just end up another face in the crowd. And that's not what she wanted. She just kind of wanted to cheer on the people that have come forward, which makes sense to me. I get it. I mean, she's, uh, she's kind of had a bit of a resurgence in her career because of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. So she's got things going on, which is really, really cool for her. Um, and 
she, I think she's right. Like, she'll just end up a face in the crowd. I personally think for her age and for who, for like who she was kicking around with back in the day, I think she's talking about Bob Evans. Um, if you don't know who Bob Evans is, he used to be essentially the king of Paramount. Um, and besides that, uh, he was the head of Paramount for a long time, fell from grace. And he's still there to this day. Like he's, his office is essentially a broom closet. But Bob Evans is still on the lot to this very day. Still kicking. Um, but Bob Evans was an inspiration for the Brett Ratners of the world and things like that. He used to have this um, this glass coffee table, um, which is just too disgusting to talk about. But um, if you watch, there's an HBO doc on Bob called The Kids Days in the Picture. And... It's really, really amazing. And it's about that time period. So if I had to bet, if I was a betting woman, which I'm not really, but you know, whatever. If I was, I would say that her story has something to do with a Bob Evans, maybe a Norman Lear, someone like that. Um, I'm not saying that Norman Lear's a bad guy. I'm just saying it was probably somebody who was heavy in television in the 60s and 70s um or super powerful which would be um which would be a bob evans if i had to guess that's my guess it's what my money's on it but she's um but her statement about being you know a a, a face in the crowd i thought was really really interesting because um i think a lot of people feel like that i think like a lot of people are very um now that things are, I'm not going to say that they're evened out, because they're not, but they're they're clicking along, I guess you could say. Now that that's happening, I think there's more people that want to be like, yeah, me too. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a dog in this fight. But I'm with you, which I think is fair. You know, not everybody has the time and legality to go through you know, what it takes to go through something like that. Like, it's just, it's really sad for a lot of people that survive these things because they don't get anything out of it. They don't get anything about out of telling anybody except drag through the mud if they're lucky. And, you know, Linda Carter, of all people, has lived a, a full life and she's getting, um, I would call it her second win, but it's probably closer to her third. Um, I'm not totally sure what she did between her time as Wonder Woman and, you know, her current, her current situation. I met her one time. I met her once. Um, I was at, I was on the Hallmark lot at a taping, working on a taping of the Marie Osmond show which was actually super, super cute. And she's a really hardworking lady. She was doing a show with her brother in Vegas at the same time. So she had six shows a night in Vegas and five taping days for her television show on Hallmark in LA. So in the morning, she would wake up in Los Angeles, go to her show, tape her show all day long, get in a jet, a real jet, not an invisible Wonder Woman jet, and then jet from LA to Vegas, do her show with her brother for a couple hours and then fly back in the same evening in the jet to Los Angeles and get up and do her show again. And then the weekend she probably stayed in Vegas because it's just too much to do. But I was so, so impressed about how, because <laughs> talk about being around the block, um, Donnie and Marie Osmond have certainly been around the block a few times. And I thought, wow, like, <laughs> There's, I know people that are, you know, half their age that wouldn't, that wouldn't work like that. Or they would complain or be like, I can't, I can't do it. It's too much. Um, which is fair because it's, it's, it's crazy grueling to, to work like that. But, um, they, when her and Linda were talking, they were talking about how, you know, they had so much in common because there's very few people who know what it's like to be on a lunchbox. And those two ladies are, um, 
they share that quality, which is really cool. Um, and she talked a lot about um, what it's like being, you know, because if you were on TV, say pre-1995, it was a very, very, very big deal. Like, not as many channels. Reality TV wasn't really a thing. Like, you were you were a serious working actor or singer or dancer or something if you were on television then. And that was um, not something bestowed on nearly as many people as there are now. Like, if you look at the top 5,000 on IMDb Star Meter, you're probably going to know an overwhelming majority of those people. <sighs> Crazily enough, even maybe even top 10,000. But um, it's... I've only been in the game for half my life. Or a little, a little more, but more, a little more than half my life. I can't imagine being that... That... I don't want to say that old. But in the game for decades and decades and being an icon and a, and a, and a pioneer and a trailblazer for so long. And... You know, seeing the ups and downs of your own career, but the, of, of other people's as well. That's really, um, staying power is no joke. And I would bet money that the reason, one of the reasons why she was like, oh, I'll be another face in the crowd is because she's been through this before. I would imagine that maybe back in the day they had something, something similar go down. Probably not as, probably didn't bear as much fruit as hashtag me too did, but I would dare to venture to say somebody like Linda Carter has seen um, the male liability studio purge and casting directors, if I had to guess. But I need to finish my face and I need to finish my hair. It was lovely chatting for the rain delay version of hashtag no filter Friday. Visit the podcast version on either um, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, any of those places. Give it a star. Give it a rating. Leave a comment. Say what's up. I don't know. Do what you want to do. So thanks for joining me, kids. See you later.